Click to record the full screen. Get that out of the way. All right, so now we're moving. So this will be archived. It will be put somewhere. I don't know why, I, no, I, put positively, I think that all of our professional development training should be put online like this. There's no excuse for us to not be able to see it because we had other commitments or, or no time. So um, now I put out a preview based on uh, a sign-up list. Stella, I know that you're not there. Are you on the site? Can you please go to the site as quickly as possible? Anybody else who's not on the site? There it is right there. I sent emails to all of you who, who were on the list that Heather gave me. So otherwise, just go here, and I have to enroll some students who haven't enrolled yet, which is going to take three or four minutes of valuable time. Um, I'm going to log in. Those of you who are there, please log in. You've already got your credentials and everything. And let's get you started. So you're doing it only in audio at this point? No, no, no. I'm, I'm recording the screen. To the, yeah, so record the desktop. But it has the audio through this. And so the students see what I'm talking about, blah, blah, blah. So um, we start with the SAS Sandbox. What is a sandbox? It's a place where people play. And so it's uh, that. Now, I'm going to just talk. I almost, what do you think, given the fact that we have very little time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take up five minutes trying to get people signed up unless they can just sign up, and that's going to take too much time. Those of you who are not already in the site, can I ask, or is anybody listening to me? Okay. Okay, so those of you who are not in the site, I think it would be really great if you could just look on the other person's computer and, and learn together, all right? So um, I'm going to repeat for the recording. I'm using a Bluetooth microphone, less than $200, to wirelessly get audio onto the screencast, and I do this for every single class I have. I'm always recording a class, and the best class of that day, if I have multiple sections, I upload that to YouTube, and I put it on Moodle, and my students who are absent, when they come to me and say, can I have an hour to find out what you did in class, I'm like, yes, take the hour on Moodle, not from me, right? Pull out your journal and do everything because there it is. It's also, if you think more about it, a great way to train new teachers in a course. You have an archive of a course, that teacher dies, quits, or leaves, you throw a new teacher into the course, that teacher has no idea what the course is about. That teacher can then face the wolves of unhappy parents and students. Or that teacher can watch the lessons daily before teaching them and see how a person who's more seasoned at the class teaches the class. So anyway, so that's a professional development use. Now, so first things first, this is Moodle. How many of you are not, who, who are signed in, how many of you are not at the SAS Sandbox right now? Please raise your, raise your hand. Not there. Okay, again, if I didn't get your name, you're not going to have an invitation, and I don't have time. I asked for, a, a, um, for names of everybody so I could do some pre-work. So, okay, I want to point out to you, notice what's on this top sticky box. Can you please look at the screen? Okay, even if you don't look at the screen, I'm going to keep talking. The sticky box right here, it's on the very top of the course, and it is always there. That's why I labeled it sticky box. You can change the labels of those boxes. So... For my real courses, there's a uh, link to Google Docs, all of our class documents. It's always on top, no matter what page you're on. Here, though, I embedded a Google presentation. So, and I'm going to make it full screen, and I'm going to give you an overview very quickly of the class. I'm going to ask you to go to that Google presentation as well. I'm sorry, yeah, to, to that, and follow along, because if you don't know this, you can embed Google presentations with links so that your students can actually go through the slides and click the links when you tell them to. So I'm going to ask you to click those links. First, I just did the meta, the archiving routine. Bluetooth microphone, QuickTime screen, uh, screen, uh, desktop recording, upload to YouTube. You've got a library for professional development and absent students. It's that easy. Uh, yep? No, because I have a producer's account or director's account or something like that from the old days when you could, I don't know, sign up for that. I don't know if YouTube still allows it. Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. All right. Next, why Moodle and why now? Why Moodle? I worked at Shanghai America. It uses Moodle. It's been using Moodle since I was there in 2001. I was a better teacher at Shanghai American using Moodle 
And for five years, I have been begging this person, that person, and the other person to please, please get us away from that ridiculously expensive train wreck that is absolutely useless called Blackboard. No offense to those of you who are Blackboard people. I know that some of you have actually, like, miraculously figured out how to use it. You're geniuses. I'm really techie, and every time I try to use Blackboard, it spoils me. Upload a, upload a video. Sorry, we don't take that MP4 file. Really? Jesus. Really? So I've got to, like, you can't take basic files? you got to, like, so, so Blackboard's horrible. It's unanimously accepted by people who know technology that it is the worst choice of LMSs, learning management systems, or course management systems. So why Moodle? First of all, correct me if I'm wrong, Darren, what's our, what's our turnover at the end of this year? How many teachers, are we, new teachers do we have next year in the high school? 25%, I heard. So one in four, one in five new teachers in the high school next year. We can either train them in the past, in the jalopy, in the Yugo, or we can train them in a better alternative. So next year, my proposal is after looking at Schoology, piloting Schoology, looking at Haiku for the one hour it took, it's another, another new one, and, and looking at Moodle. My proposal is, I could do a, a thorough comparison of the three saying, this is a turd of, of a month's age, this is a fresh turd, and this is a filet mignon. Or for those of you who are vegetarian, this is a nice, nice tofu dish. Yeah. Tofu dish. But I'm not going to sit here and do a comparative analysis of old turd, fresh turd, and nice dish. I can do that for any of you who need that kind of conversation later. I'm going to focus on the one that I recommend. So that's why now, because next year, ideally, we'll be phasing, we'll be, we'll be having a two-track Moodle implementation and Blackboard last year. Early adopters, new teachers, all that sort of thing can move into Moodle next year. All those who are still attached to Blackboard have that last year to sort more slowly follow as the second way. And the why now again, because we have so many new teachers coming in, it would be silly to train them and the turd. Um, please click on the HOC student survey on Moodle after six weeks. So you, yes. Where did what outline come from? It's on the, it's on the, yeah, so ask your neighbors if you're lost, and I'll try not to yell at you the way I yell at students when they start chattering. Um, I'm simply going to alert you to this, and I'm going to keep talking because this presentation, there's no way. I have my, my History of China students after six weeks, and, and for those of you who don't know, my father died in one of those weeks, and so for 10 days, I was really not being able to develop this brand new experiment. I lost 10 days between asking if I could do this experiment and this presentation time. So my point with that is, I haven't had time to train my students in it. Nonetheless, this is their feedback. Now, you can see the key right there. Bold black. That's me, I pre-read. So the, the questions were, too goods, too okays, too bads about Moodle compared to Blackboard. And so I highlighted, I read them, I pasted them, um, and I highlighted noteworthy. Blue is especially interesting. So you can skim down and look at that blue. The red, that's my commentary about it, right? Um, a lot of the things that the students didn't like, simply I could train them, oh, you want to get rid of the clutter? Click two buttons and it's gone, things like that. But in any case, it's very, very illuminating to hear the students which we so rarely do um, when we make decisions. Now, and, oh, interesting. Oh, I think I've got it, hold on. To the Chinese department. The student said that Moodle, in a nutshell, teachers don't use it for mm, giving quizzes. So, no, teachers don't assess with Blackboard. They never. One says frequently, and I think they just misread the question. Um, I'm kidding. Teachers give tests online. They actually use technology to assess and get data. What a concept. We pay $35,000 a year for Blackboard, and we don't use it to assess using technology and get data about mastery of each individual student. But we spend $35,000 a year, right? Never. 95%. Have a discussion. Have discussion forums on, on, on Blackboard. Never. 84%. Assign due dates. What do, you, what do you predict there? These teachers assign due dates on Blackboard? Oh, now we're talking. Now we're getting really good with our technology, right? We can tell kids on this $35,000 piece of crap what their due date is. And even then, only 20% actually frequently or almost always do. 
till due dates using Blackboard. Share files, 35 and 19, about 50% frequently or almost always share files. Communicate individually to me via Blackboard. That's one of our DSLOs, right? Nobody uses Blackboard to communicate to their students. So my, my simple question, why are we using Blackboard, right? When the students themselves. Now, do flip classroom stuff? No. Sometimes, frequently, and, and so uh, a couple of teachers are showing that they actually do want to use technology to instruct and assess, but most really don't seem to. Now, the question shifts here. Daily lessons uh, about Moodle. Rate the following Moodle features, one to five. Daily lessons on one page. And you're going to see, right, notice the shift. Suddenly, the positives, somewhat useful and very useful, come up to almost 80, over 80 percent, over 90 percent. Assignments are easy to find and do. Notice they're doing assignments using this tool. Again, over 85 percent, somewhat or very useful. Practice quizzes, formative quizzes. Videos of class apps for absent students, very useful, on and on. So you see Moodle, everything is negative. I'm sorry, Blackboard, everything is negative. Moodle, everything is positive. I won't beat this dead horse beyond that. Um, that being said, I would love it if you would now do the pre-workshop survey. This, this course is open to you, so you can do it. Let me first just show you, in a nutshell, this is the home page. So when you logged in, that wouldn't normally be there. I'm doing that for you just to make it easy to find. When you log in, every single one of these bars, please look, every single one of these bars, these orange bars, is a, is a lesson or a week or a topic. There are many different ways to, to uh, arrange the home page, the course home page. But I want you to, and I've labeled each one. So if you go to the opening survey and student survey on SAS Tech, please do that survey right now so that I can gather some data, pre-workshop. Yes, Dennis. You have to be signed into SAS. Yes. Well, there's a number of students responded and said that Moodle is foldable. And that's an example of the foldable, exactly. They're called collapsed topics. So there's a, there's a, this is a toggle right here. And you don't even have to click that. You just click on the bar itself and it expands it. Yeah, and collapse it. Notice you don't have to use that organization system. There are others. I just find this. Yeah. Opening survey, student survey. Once you finish with that, what time's the thing over? 45? Wait, can you come here and do this first thing? Yep. Um, you got to be signed into SAS. No. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay, opening survey. This is where I'm landing. Okay. I'll let you out of it and scroll up. Huh? No. Navigation tools, maybe. Well, no, just go back to the thing. Should be, I don't know. You've got it done. The new way. I'm, I'm, no, no, don't even touch it. It's a open survey. It's an expense. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Now, if you have finished that survey, please give me a second so you can see how easy it is to close that thing because you're done with it. Watch this. Please watch this. How do I close that? How do I close that long survey thing? You click on it. Toggle. Open. Close with one click. Um, for those of you who want to see more of the, the comparison between the, the, the feces and the, the Lexus, this is how Schoology, and Schoology is not bad. I take that back. I'm being, facetious, I'm being facetious. No pun intended. Facetious. Um, Schoology is not bad, but it's not as good as Moodle, and it costs five times as much. There's a, a laundry list of reasons not to do Schoology. If Schoology does its price hikes, they own the platform. Ning did it to us already. How many years ago? Five or six. I put so much money into Ning. Somebody owns Ning. Somebody said, we're not making enough profit. We're doubling our premiums. And I had to stop using Ning. This is not owned by anybody. Moodle's not owned by anybody. So if, if our server says our prices go up, we say, well, let's look at your competition because they will serve it. They will support it and they might be cheaper than you. So there is built-in market forces keeping all sorts of bad things from ever happening. But again, I look at just the, the course homepage, comparing and contrasting those two is instructive.
Can we please, even if you're not finished with that survey, who's still working on the survey, that opening survey? Okay, you know what, even if you're not finished, do to save time, yeah, this should have been a two hour thing, I don't know why I didn't make it, because somebody told me not to, because then nobody would come, or something. I really need two hours for you to get the most experience out of this. So, please hear me. If you're still working on the survey, just click later, because you can edit it later, and we can move on. Because I want you to now close that and come to this, this sample common assessment. You're actually going to take a Moodle quiz. Looking at the board here, I'm trying to show you where to click, please. Sample PLC common assessment. There's a link at the bottom to a quiz. Open that up, please, and just take the quiz. The password in a saucy, okay, I don't have a bloody, I don't have a, 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 a whiteboard marker. Life is lovely. I'm Clay, by the way. For those of you who don't know me, I'm nice. I thought I'd be nice, but uh, I'm a real dirt, too, so just deal with it. All right. Um, the password is <coughs> IPD is A-OK. -okay. All right, because I'm facetious. Um, oh, come on now. Can you please? Holy mother. Never freaking mind. Let me show you the password. I thought I would have a whiteboard marker. Crazy me. IPD is A-OK. -okay. That's the password for the quiz. You click on that quiz, and you enter that password. This password. Notice it is case sensitive. Once you click it, you will just observe. I set it so that you can only take three minutes to take the quiz. So take three minutes to take the quiz. The sample PLC quiz. Think of this as a common assessment your PLC could easily make to test the easily testable items that you are your standard space. There's only one question. Now read the bottom before. Yeah, I made it short so that you could just have a taste. Now, Okay, those of you who have finished it, please listen. This is the important thing. Notice when you finish it and you submit your answers, look at the feedback that you got on your wrong answers. How many of you missed a, a, a question? Sherry, how many of you missed a question? Have you, oh, you haven't done it yet. Okay, hurry up. In fact, just randomly click them so that we can, don't, look around, it's there. We've got the overachievers in the room who want to get an A plus on the, Sherry, just, there you go. So click next. Yeah. And then it gives you a warning. It's anal retentive, but it's at the same time communicative. Yeah. Let me take it with you. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? You can set it however you want. Okay. I'm going to hold on a sec. IPD is IPD. What are you noticing when you look at your results, please? This is the important thing. How many, how many of you students are actually listening to me instead of looking at your laptop? It gives you corrective feedback to every wrong answer you had. And so you can take it multiple times. I can set it so that you can take it multiple times at home. I can't hear you. What? I put the feedback in. As a PLC, you could easily divide up for one standard. I'm going to make three questions, and everybody in our PLC is going to make three questions, and we can then have them randomly come in from the standard set in our question bank, and then we can share that quiz amongst the PLC, every single classroom, and then it scores it when we make it a real test. It scores it, and you have data of who attained mastery, who doesn't, and then you do the PLC level three and four. Right? We've identified who didn't master that standard, and so now we can go and we can speak to them. And you know what? If you use the corrective feedback really well, you don't have to reteach them because you can actually use technology to teach them things that are simply, what's the word? What's the word? That type of learning that's just like learning, procedural learning, right, for example? But anyway. I gave a, a, a quick testimonial. I gave a 52-question geography quiz. Where is Manchuria, the Gobi Desert, the Takamakan Desert, what is Lua soil? 
identify all the major cities of ancient China, the, the, the multiple choice, dragging labels onto maps, all sorts of things. 52 questions. And I did what, what you just saw. And students, and I said it so that they could redo it multiple times. There was feedback for every single one of those questions. And I, I gave it to them early enough for them to practice at home, knowing that this is their first major test for the semester. And they came in, and my success rate was over 90% made ANA plus on a 52-item objective test. I have never seen that sort of success. This is, this is my argument. Google Docs and, all, and, and Blogger and all those sorts of things, you know what, they're great for reflective, but they're not great for assessing our core knowledge. I want, my, I want to know my kids know the periodic table before we can talk chemistry. I can do that core knowledge stuff with an objective test. I don't want to give a Scantron. I don't want to, I don't want to do all the dynasties in order. Here, write them out, and then let's take 20 minutes of class time. Okay, everybody gr switch your paper so that we can waste time. I do this. I do it once. I've got it every single class, every single year, and I'm getting the data that the PLC people are telling me to get for standards-based assessment. I saw a hand. No? So, so please hear this. I am not arguing Google versus Moodle. I'm arguing Moodle and Google and WebAssign and so many tools that you use that probably can be embedded inside a lesson in Moodle. Let's look at that right now. I will show you an example. Uh, oh, here it is. So if you click the next thing down, how many of you have tools that you're like, all right, I'm happy with this thing I have, so I don't want to make new questions, because I have a, a quiz generator or something, a math quiz generator or a science quiz generator. Anybody in here? Web assign. Web assign. So let me show you this, because there are other, at the bottom of this, the activities are always at the bottom. This is called a, um, an external tool. When it's got a puzzle piece, that means it's an external tool that uh, can integrate with Moodle, single sign-on. The, the grades from WebAssign, if set up properly, and that's, we can do that if we go with this, um, if set up properly, the WebAssign grades will go straight into the Moodle gradebook. Gradebook discussions we can have later. They can actually customize the Moodle gradebook so that any grades that go into a Moodle quiz go straight into PowerSchool, and we don't have to keep, you know, that's one, another less, one less thing we have to do. Use non-technology to enter grades into PowerSchool because our technology doesn't play well with PowerSchool, right? Don't you hate entering grades to power school? Isn't it a time suck? Um, so, yeah, so there's websites. Notice, it's right in the middle of the screen. Dennis, you seeing that? Yeah, okay. And so, uh, okay, whoops. Okay, just Barton Miller just sent me an email with gays in Chinese culture. That's a great thing to record on the, on the um, Barton, what are you, what, Bart? Gays in Chinese culture. Oh my goodness, I'm clutching my pearls and fainting. Um, Let's go back to the sandbox. <laughs> Where are we going to go? I want to go next. Very, very quickly, I want to, uh, to point out to you that there are some high-level things that can be done. Dennis sent me a, I don't have audit. I do have a button on the point of view of presenter, teach students online. When you first start a big button, You'll see a number of windows. The first window you notice in the upper left hand corner is the user's window. Your name will be shown in blue and as other users. So I'm not going to play the whole thing, but notice you can do video conferencing. Here are all your students. They can be students in other countries, including China, which Google doesn't allow. China does not allow Google. So we're talking about, this is a very important selling point too. We're talking about doing regional or international collaboration with other schools and institutions. Well, you know what? If we want to use Google Plus or Google Hangouts or Google Drive with China, China does not allow them. I predict that we cannot, or I claim, I assert that we cannot predict that other authoritarian uh, civilizations, like for example Europe, that's a joke, are also going to start restricting Google. Why? Because the NSA scandal has actually made Angela Merkel, or Angela Merkel, and uh, Francois Hollande, the, the, French, the French and German leaders 
actually proposed to the European Parliament, the EU Parliament, recently, we need to make our own European Internet that does not go into United States servers because we can't trust them. They lied. No matter what they say, we can't trust the U.S. anymore and the U.S. servers. China already blocks Google. We have no guarantees due to this NSA scandal that other countries won't be following suit. Latin America is incredibly angry. On and on and on. So, um, so a lot of these things are things that would not be blocked because they're not Google. And so there's no reason to mistrust them like this. This is a Google Plus, a, a Google Hangouts alternative. You can record them, archive them, and all that sort of thing. Make sense? Big blue button. Um, now, but when we can play well with Google, you have this sandbox. If you're interested in, in this rapid overview, you have this sandbox. You can sign into it. You can play around. The student feedback says many things. Oh, PE teachers, to show me a, a slow motion video of the, of the proper way to approach and kick the soccer ball, whatever, right? And not put a link to it to somewhere else. To be able to embed videos. And then you can put like, you can actually put a video in a discussion forum. Analyze, analyze the, the movements and the form of this kicker. What do you think is essential in his precise aim? Well, that's what this is. We have coaches on. We have such a thing as Telestrator and all that, where we can actually outline speaking our iPads, all, all movements, but we do not have that tool where we can give written feedback. So if we could do that plus what you're talking about there, then that would be. And, and that's the thing. And so you can. Discussion forums are gorgeous. I'm going to actually take you there. So this is how to embed videos. That's YouTube. How to embed images, which liven up anything. And then, you know, here's a Google Doc, right? So you can put all of your Google stuff. This is a demonstration. Google and Moodle play well together. There's a Google Doc. This is my... my so far, no. Um, but I haven't played with the, the integration as much because I, I'm, I'm also a travel agent for interim semester, a coach for Taiwan, and sometimes I teach in February. Yeah, and so you've got the choice to always, like if you want them to edit, you can put a link so they click out to it. Um, notice I made a sandbox for everybody who I, I was told. I apologize to those of you who don't, uh, who I, I was not told, Stella, others. Um, is there anything else? Oh, now notice what I just went through. Such a horrible thing. Look at this. I like it. I'm going to zoom out so that you can see it. So all those things, all those boxes are open. This open all and close all is a very handy thing. Right? It just collapses all those folders at once, like closing up your file cabinet. Um, let's go back up to the, the presentation. All right, so, and I'm sorry I've forgotten your name, although we've had so many workshops together. I'm, I'm oh, sure. Chuck? Okay, so you're Chuck Schreiner. Okay. Please click on the – no, look, this is a school where the, the population of SAS faculty is larger than China's, right? I don't know everybody's names. Do you? Chuck, I, you know that, right? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> – <laughs> okay. It's like I tell what's her name, my wife. Okay. Um, please click on this flipped classroom plus self-grading comprehension checks because, Chuck, this is exactly what I, we were just talking about. Okay, a meta thing, meta, by meta I mean like uh, pulling out and looking at the uh, functions and such as a teacher. Notice over here in the sidebar, this is, this is me as a teacher. I've got administration, it's smart, it's a smart administration thing because it knows I'm on a quiz setting and so it says he probably wants to administer the quiz. So I'm just going to do a preview so that I can get right to what I want to show Chuck and other people. Who here uses flipped classroom? Anybody? Okay, so this is the same type thing. My students really like this. So this is a, notice a 17 page as opposed to the one page quiz that you just took. This is a 17 page quiz. Do you see it on the right sidebar? 17 items. Now, so Chuck, here we go. And you can come back and look at this later. This is a whirlwind preview. So the I over here, all those I's instead of numbers, those are informational. So that's where I put my video. This is actually a screen, a, a recording of the geography lecture that I gave to students, and then I chopped it up into chunks and put questions after each one. Because I was like, oh, that would be a really nice flip classroom thing. Content, comprehension question, and the next one. Content, comprehension question. And then when I come to the class, I already have the data who got the content and comprehended it based on that stuff, and I don't have to try to figure that out in the classroom. 
Um, <clears throat> so you just click next. And then there are your questions. I've given you teacher privileges. You can play with all sorts of quiz question types. Notice this is a, this is a, uh, a matching definition. You can put uh, all sorts of different distractors in there, as many questions as you want. And then in, uh, moving on, informational. Same type of thing. Watch the video on the next page. Check your understanding with some comprehension questions. Right? Now, Chuck, that's a quiz. And I actually use that notice as a lesson. It's really a lesson. It's not a quiz because the grades don't count. It's formative. But they can watch it at home and they can learn it far better than if I'm just like just ramming it at them in the classroom one time without any questions. And I don't know who gets it because I don't have data, right? And so I find it's very valuable, especially because I can use this every year, right? And never and and save class time to actually do more interesting things and dish out facts. Okay, so you can show them a movement pattern on video, and then they turn around and interpret that movement pattern that they that they witnessed, right? Yes. And so I'm going to go back to uh, the next thing I want to show you. And, uh, Yes, yeah, and so the great, you can, uh, going back to it, I just showed you where it said edit settings. On the, on the administration, there is a results thing, quiz results, and it takes you to it, list of students by, by section, if you want it that way, or all, and it shows you which questions they got wrong, what percentage, much like Scantron does in its master thing, but notice it tells the students to, and it gives them feedback instantly. Uh, the short answer, I've, okay, first of all, there are a lot of things that I haven't tried, a lot of things that I have tried and learned that I'm not going to try them again until I get it more. So it's very easy to do the basic level stuff on this. That's what's beautiful. And I want to show you forums now because, Chuck, this is maybe something that you would find as valuable as quizzes, another option. So, and, and Jason, you asked about that in my pre-course survey, my pre-workshop survey. So on page three of the slide on top of the sandbox, on page three, you see forums. Please click on, and if you're good, right click or command click. Click on sample to take you to a tab where you can see a forum. One of the complaints that I have about the history of China is that students, oh, I'm supposed to tell you to hashtag stuff and all sort of things. I'm going to hashtag this when I put it on wherever I can put it so that people can see it because I don't know what that is for SAS. Um, Google Plus or something, I don't know. Anyway, back to my point here. One of the complaints that I have from students is this stuff is also interesting and I, and I forget it by the end of the semester and I hate that. I know we have Blogger, but not if I, not if I leave a remote course to China. Um, you can integrate Blogger into this, just like WebAssign. You can actually have Blogger open up inside of this. I have seen that claim and I've seen a tutorial on how to do it for those of you in the IT department. Um, but in any case, so a weekly, or no, now daily, it's, just, it's all trial and error right now because finally I'm using technology in my classroom again to actually let students learn and reflect, right? Learn and reflect and do higher order stuff and communicate and read each other and, and rate each other's writing and all sorts of stuff. And they always say, I wish I had written more, journaled more because I didn't know how interesting it was going to be at the beginning and by the end, gosh, Chinese history is really interesting. And so at the end of every class, this is the latest thing. Not three most interesting things, because that turned into, I, I decided, no, that was a weekly three most interesting things from this week's discussion. Notice it's individualized. Most interesting to you. But now it's one most interesting thing due by the next class from that class's thing. And so they've got a running journal, which can be exported as a portfolio into Google Drive, into Dropbox, into any number of things. Um, and so, but scrolling down now to look at, I can give these to anybody who wants the same how to embed an image. I'm telling the students, you know what, you're going to be writing online. If you know how to put an image, embed an image, and format it well, and all sort of things, so that the presentation of your writing is attractive, the way any good website is, Huffington Post or CNN or whatever, um, then you're a step up above those other knuckleheads who just let Facebook do it all for them. How to embed a video. But in any case, so now this is a forum. And so Jason, Chuck, and anybody else who finds value in forums, what do you observe? This is so cool. Now as an English teacher and a writing teacher, if I were to show you, what do you observe about these, these different students 
as writers, simply looking at the links to their forum posts for that week. Any observations about comparing the students here? You look at the titles, and to me the titles scream, this kid understands writing. They've got a sense of audience. The first forum I gave was called Introduction, Introduce Yourself. And it was so interesting because this entire column of titles, guess what the titles were for these knuckleheads who have no sense of audience before they come into a class where a teacher says, by God, you're going to have a sense. That shows you. That's what the title was. Of every single one but one. Introduction. And I'm like, you are so boring. Notice, you are so unoriginal and you are so boring. You chose the same title everybody else did. There's nothing special about you based on this. Congratulations, you just blew your attempt to make a good first impression. Look at them now. Look at them now. Look at these titles. They're practicing that, that introductory handshake, writer to reader. Please read me. I thought about this title. The never-ending social narrative. Nice, Eshan. Right? The language of ancient democracies. Oh, my God. Okay? And not only that, I'm telling them to seduce each other, right? Because you notice your, your peers are reading this stuff, too. And so they're competing to get clicks. They're competing to get comments. And notice, replies. Alexi got a couple of replies. I, I assign reply and rate based on this. So let's, let's rate one. Yeah, I tell them. And right now, again, this is all. Okay, so, so here we go. So you can click on anyone that, that, are, that attracts you and even leave a note. That would be totally cool. But I want to show you the peer and English teachers. I want to show you the peer rating thing. This can be standards-based. Notice I've got it set on a 4, 3, 2, 1 scale that I entered. The gradebook's very, very flexible and robust. I've got the standards-based 1, 2, 3, 4 scale. I've got the 9-point scale. Uh, that's a yes. And uh, all in the, in the middle gradebook, which is still clunky, and we should pay to have it customized by our developers in Malaysia who host this. They can do it. They can SAS, what do you want? Here are our developers. They write Moodle code. They're Moodle specialists. And they can make a, a gradebook that works for us. But in any case, so rate. And so I tell them, this time you're rating on presentation, how good were the images, or how interesting was it, how insightful was it, whatever, right? And so instead, this one was respond to the best idea, most interesting idea to you, extend it, say yes and, challenge it, I disagree, or qualify it, I agree with this part but not this part, and then rate it. And so it's a simple drop-down rating. Watch what happens when I click the rating. Um, Oh, I can't. I don't know why. Because I'm teacher, not student. That's why. Um, okay, so back to you, Chuck. You could you could easily put a video in here and then say analyze that, and then all the students would actually. There are different ways to set up forums too. You can set up forums where they can't read another student's response until they respond first. Very nice, because they can't cheat. They can't just like I'm going to just steal somebody else's idea. And then only after posting can they see what everybody else says. You can set it where there's only, you ask a question and everybody has to reply to that question. There, there are quite a number of different forum choices you can make, setups you can make based on what you want it to do. But notice what's happening here. This is, we have gone from the core knowledge to the communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. Because now they're writing and they've got a portfolio and it can play well with a single click export to Google Drive as a portfolio of their entire course. Now it's 8.22, I guess I have three minutes. I'm going to quickly, for, for those who, here it is in a nutshell, and this is, here's the tip of the iceberg. I like Schoology. Schoology is okay, but you know what? Schoology does not allow students in the forums to put pictures, to put bold print, to put italics. And you know what? If I want to emphasize something, I like italicizing. And so do many excellent writers who I read. Schoology lets me do it. I'm the teacher. But the students, they only get plain text. No images, no embedding, no, no uh, rich text. 
they promise. I put in a ticket because I, I was first like, oh, Schoology is great, because I didn't think that SAS would even consider Moodle. I'd been asking them for Moodle for five years, and they seemed to be just completely resistant to that idea, despite the fact that KIS uh, in Korea, uh, Shanghai American, ISKL, GIST, a number of international schools. It's a, well, I'll get back to it. So what does Moodle cost? 4000 per, per year for 4,000 students. And that is with support of Moodle developers. So these aren't just guys who have a server. No, I don't know Moodle. That's your problem. No, these are guys who we do know Moodle. We actually code Moodle. We're Australians. We like beer, too. And um, they do. They're great. Moodle is an Australian product. And so they're very close to us. They're professional development. Our host is in our, our, our server right now, a Moodle partner, is in Malaysia. Vinny, he can come right down. He's British. But he, he, he likes beer, too. Um, Schoology. Eight to nine dollars per student at a four thousand student school. That's between thirty two and thirty whatever forty thousand dollars. And they can price gouge us again. Name price gouge people. They own it. You marry a proprietary thing like Blackboard. Notice we've been married to Blackboard. We can't go Blackboard. We don't like your service. We want to take our Blackboard to no. no we, I, I won't go into it any further. Again, track record. Moodle's been around for twelve years. Schoology has been around for less than three years. How do we know it will be around three years from now when it's a startup? It's a startup, and it feels like a startup. That's the problem. The question types are not as robust. The quizzes, the forums, all those things. It feels beta, new, still immature, young. So why would we, in a nutshell, why would we pay eight times more for something that feels one-fifth as, as mature? Um, again, stronger assessment in Moodle, thinner. Uh, support, I just told you, Malaysia's Moodle partners. I have, I have spoken to Schoology representatives and interviewed them. It took a long time, and then it took a long time for them to, to deliver on their promises to respond on a Google Doc about the questions that we want from administrative down to teacher level and student level and gradebook level. It took them longer to respond. They're in the United States, and they don't have any competition. Moodle's support in Malaysia has been very fast, very responsive. I have not been able to show you. I had a kid who failed the geography quiz. And I was like, so what are the two possibilities when a kid fails a quiz that everybody else makes an A to A plus on? Play with me now. I'm sorry. I've been lecturing the whole time, but that's the way these things work. What are the two possibilities, at least, that come to mind? Everybody else aced it. This kid failed it. How can we explain two possible reasons this kid failed that quiz when everybody else aced it? He didn't prepare. He didn't prepare, right? I put that formative quiz on there. I told them, right? And you got a test next time. And so what's the other possibility? In your PLC, you're talking about, right, well, this student didn't master it. And so we need to, like, set up an appointment with the student and bring him in and put our blood, sweat, and tears into, like, giving time to the student because we're going to make this student succeed and attain mastery. And you don't know. Well, you do when you have data. The student logs that we are able to see are fantastic. It tells me for every single student when they signed in, how long they stayed signed in, how what sites they visited, and so there's a, and so I went to this one student. I was like, it's really surprising. Why wow, does this person have some, you know some sort of learning challenges? I don't know about cognitive things. No, the student spent 10 minutes before the class began reviewing the formative quiz that everybody else had the weekend to do. So I am so now I, I I am more informed, and I don't have to like go and like oh I'm going to spend three four hours of my week teaching you because I'm dedicated. No, you're a lazy slob, and you have no discipline. I just learned that. I've got the data. Wonderful. And he came up to me, and I said, I said, so, you know, what happened? He goes, I don't have discipline. I was like, I'm glad you said that because I know that. I've got evidence, right? And he said, I'm trying to work on that. Sweet, right? That data <laughs> is a lifesaver. Okay, so I'm about done. In the one minute remaining, I would greatly appreciate it if you would do the closing workshop survey, which is on the main page of the sandbox. Closing survey, the second box, do you see it? That's very fast, and, and I'm gathering data from you.